Hi guys, welcome back. It's Stingley here from Slick Games and we are currently five days into creating a Metroidvania in four weeks. In this video we're going to look at creating a level and segmenting that into rooms. Um, I'm going to be using LDTK which is a superb tool and also uh, an add-on for the Godot game engine. So uh, let's see how I get on. Okay, it is Saturday and uh, it is about half past ten in the evening. Um, I've had a great day out with my family today. I'm hoping to get a couple of hours of game dev in this evening. plan tonight is to experiment a bit more with LDTK. Uh, you can see here I've uploaded up my sample level. Um, I want to work out how to split these uh, into individual rooms so that I can transition between using code and then that way I can trigger things like um, spawning enemies and cutscenes and things like that. My hope is that I can use LDTK to basically create one ginormous map with all of my um, rooms in for each of the biomes that I've got planned and then somehow um, automatically create individual rooms that I can transition between in-game. Might be a bit of a might be a bit of a stretch, but hopefully, yeah, that's my plan anyway. So let's see how we go. A few moments later, I just had to go and check my timestamp of the last video because I've got this working in 25 minutes, and I'm quite impressed actually. I'm using um, LDTK with a bunch of rules. Let's see if I can find created a tile set first of all uh, to all of my tiles from a sprite and then I've applied them to rules to my layer ah here's the rules so in here I've created two sets of rules um, I have my ground rules and I have my decoration rules now my ground rules are pretty straightforward I basically have tiles that are um, just sort of blank tiles on their own tiles that appear only at the top of the uh, bunch of tiles and I've got tiles that only appear at the bottom and these are really straightforward rules so if you go into here, this for example this is looking for so this, this is the tile that it is going to colour in it is looking it's going to colour in with whatever it is you set here so in this case my grass tile uh, it has to have nothing above it and it has to have something beneath it so it has to be a collision layer itself and it has to have something underneath it and you will get grass. Uh, with the sort of underhang, or whatever you want to call it, I've actually got this set to be two random tiles. Uh, you can see here these two in this tile set. And all it's looking for is it has to be a collision layer with nothing underneath. Really easy. Uh, some of my decoration ones are a little bit more complicated. Some of these ones that do like little edges of grass, um, you can see you're effectively drawing out what you want it to look like. So that means that I can literally create a new patch of land really easily. Oh, my grass as well that appears on the top, which is quite cool. So I can draw this out now, and given the rules that I have set for it which you know I can easily change um, you can see very quickly by just drawing a few blocks out um, it is actually creating a nice looking level mental and you could easily extend this with flowers and trees and all sorts of stuff I mean for example my my grass layer um, I've got a purling noise set on it this one here this purling filtering and what this basically means is um, if it was disabled, obviously it put grass on the top of all of it. But with it set, uh, you can see here, it's, you can see which tiles are going to be ignored, and you can change the scale of this, and that'll change where it positions the grass. Um, you know, so you can mess around with that, and that will change now whether which which tiles actually have the grass applied to it. So you could you could effectively create a rule for I don't know, flowers or something that were you know only to be used sporadically and without any additional work all you're going to do is just draw a, you know 
draw your level effectively it will go through that and go okay fine I'll put grass there I'll put uh, flowers there I'll do this and the other and you know very quickly you can generate a level amazing the good news is that this has opened up instantaneously in Godot it's brilliant you can see there's all my, uh, my detailed um, grass elements and all that sort of stuff and the ground is there really really straightforward the bad news is for some reason it hasn't imported the collision layer in the sample level I've got this group match up with this collision layer uh, and within it is a bunch of collision shapes and you can see here they're on, on the screen they've got these all blue um, outlines blue, blue shapes and it's done that for each of the uh, rooms if you want to know a better phrase within this sample level and that's great because it means that when I play the game I don't drop through the world because this hasn't done that when I um, when I add my player and kind of out here save that and test the level I just drop straight through it hmm. I thought I'd take another look at the page for the plugin that I'm using to actually do the importing from LDTK into Godot. Just scrolling down here and funnily enough there's a section on importing collisions and it quite clearly states create a layer called collisions and any tile in it will have a rectangle shape 2D added to it in a new layer. So I'm guessing I've just got to go and rename my layer. Yeah, that seems to have done the trick. So you can see I've now got my blue uh, rectangles. I've got my collisions layer. And hopefully now. Excellent. I have collisions. That's great. Right, so I've created a, I don't know, a room now in LDTK. And yeah, it's worked really well. Um, I've created this little bit up here that you can you need to wall jump to get up into um, but there are a few glitches um, it seems to have randomly imported like a large collision area that I can't get rid of so I think I've got this figured out now um, I don't think it liked having a single uh, wall block having two wall blocks it doesn't mess it up um, so I've been able to create my sort of um, some of these heights a little bit to make it a bit easier for the player but yeah so you can jump up that first room and then you would enter into the second room which is this room here um, you wouldn't be able to get up this bit unless you can wall jump you can't get up this bit here unless you can double jump which I obviously can't do yet because I've actually built it in um, and the idea is that I'll have some sort of collectible up there a couple of issues though um, can't work out how to segment the two rooms into two rooms. I've just got one room available at the moment, um, one giant room, and which means that adding in the camera bounds so that it doesn't show you the bottom you know, of the bottom of the screen, that's going to be kind of difficult. So I'm going to work out how that is going to work. Okay, I've come up with a solution and it works. It's not particularly elegant, but it's really good. I'm fairly pleased with it. You can see here my uh, my hero, the camera, uh, is no longer panning across to the left. This is the edge of one room. If I run into this room, though, you can see it transitions fairly nicely from one to the other. It also goes the same the other way, except, of course, there's not a room to the right yet. So when you run into an adjacent room what I've actually done is I've, I've put a big collision area uh, that detects the player's presence and effectively swaps the player into that room so here's the map layout now um, I've added in these additional nodes here top left bottom right and then an area 
for each room zone and you can see I've got one in this forest one uh, node and I've got one the same set in the forest zero node. Uh, I might try and generalize this a little bit because obviously uh, you know, I can just instance an additional room detection layer or something that'd be much easier but anyway this is what we've got working at the moment. Um, both of these area 2Ds have a connection and that is connected to the on room zone body entered uh, receiver method and it passes into it the argument for whichever node it's within. I was trying to work out a way of actually just using the parent but I haven't quite worked that out yet so at the moment it just passes that into the method. The method itself is really simple, it checks to make sure the body is the player, uh, it gets the zone from whatever room label has been passed into it, it goes and gets the top left and bottom right position 2D nodes from that zone and then it sets the, uh, the body camera limit left. So because the body is the player, it has a camera attached to it. The camera has limits so we're basically setting the limits for the camera that's attached to the player to be the uh, top left and bottom right positions and what's really nice about this setup is the fact that i can uh, use this to trigger additional logic like um, recording where the player entered the room so when the player dies it can respawn at the point that he actually entered the room and uh, yeah so i can track that and I should also be able to trigger additional events that happen in individual rooms. My only issue is the fact that I've got to do this setup for every single room that I put into the game. But realistically, if I can work out a way of making this combination of nodes um, really simple, uh, then I don't see any reason why it should be uh, difficult to do. So, yeah, fairly happy with that. Okay, I'm going to call this a video here guys. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please give the video a like and consider subscribing to see more from this game series. And I will hopefully see you in the next one.